Awake? Yeah. Ready to go? Amen. Awesome, awesome. Great to see you all. Couple quick announcements. Um, Jim wanted me to announce that in their Sunday school class coming up, no, not Sunday school class, Tuesday morning men's group, they are actually having a teaching about when a nation forgets their God. That's going to be a really good one. So any men that would like to attend, that's going to be on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Also, to, I don't know if you guys noticed when you walked in, there's a basket out front um, for Easter candy. We are planning a big Easter thing for the children this year. Uh, stay tuned for the date to be announced, but we're going to try to do outreach. We're not going to try. We are going to do an outreach um, for kids in the community that's going to be open to them, and we're going to try to have, not going to try, we are going to have 4,000 eggs, and uh, it's another opportunity just for us to show the community that we're here, um, that we're interested in children, and just put ourselves out there and hope that you know we have a great turnout. So if you could be praying about that. Also, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. If you want to participate, we're going to need a lot of volunteers that day. Also, maybe you're not up to volunteering, but maybe you have the gift of baking and you'd like to make cupcakes or cookies or something like that for the children. We'll have a sign-up out front for that as well. Also, we have baptisms coming up at the end of March. So if that's something you're interested in, there is a sign-up sheet out front for that as well. And for anybody interested in taking membership or just getting to know what the church is all about, we will be having growth track starting in March. That's going to be March 8th and March 15th. That's going to be a two-part class. Uh, Pastor Steve will be teaching that, and that's just to show what the vision of the church is moving forward. Um, that's not just for new people. That's for anybody that wants to come. Also, taking that class does not mean you're obligated to take membership, but it will be a requirement for membership. But you can take that class just to see, you know, what, who we are and, and what our plans are and what we're going to be doing moving forward. So anybody is welcome to take that. There's also a sign-up sheet out there. We do need um, to have enough materials available for that. Anything else that you need to know is in your bulletin. So um, we did revamp that a little bit to make it more, you know, easy to see. While I'm up here, I want to give a big shout out to Reamer Permenter. Our nursery bathroom has new flooring and there's a new vanity in there and it's about halfway done because we're still going to be painting. So if we could just thank him for that this morning. Many of you have helped with painting and doing different things around the church, and we are grateful to everybody who has done anything um, in that capacity to, to make the building even better, so we're grateful for that. How many of you are grateful that we have a place where we can come and worship today Amen. in spirit and in truth? We thank you for that. If you all could stand, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and open up the service. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just go before you this morning, Lord, grateful that we can come before you, Lord. Lord, that you are a God who sees us where we are today. Lord, you are a God who meets each and every one of our needs right where we're at. And Lord, I just pray over each and every person sitting in these pews, Lord, that you would meet them right where they are today, Father. Lord, we're thankful for you, Lord. We're thankful that you're a healing God, that you're a ministering God. And, Lord, that you are alive. And, Lord, we just um, give this entire service to you today, Lord, from the praise and worship to the teaching of your word. Lord, we pray that your anointing would rest on this service from beginning to the end, that each of our hearts would be ready to receive whatever it is that you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. You give life. You are love. You bring i 
situation there's joy on the other side of that fire he will not leave you without support he said he would never never leave you nor forsake you that means he's underneath you he's around you you're not gonna faint or fall not without support amen Did 
and sing of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. have your way Lord there's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your our living home your presence Lord. thank you for your presence in this room I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is
thank you for your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Why don't we take a moment and just give him a little more praise. praise give him the praise Lord. that he deserves this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Before you see seated this morning, why don't you give a neighbor a high five and just tell them, look them in the eye and tell them God is good. Amen. <laughs> Say, just in case you didn't know. Just in case you didn't know this morning. Just in case you came to church this morning wondering if God was good. Uh, your neighbor is looking you in the eye this morning and declaring, absolutely, God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship with our giving this morning. And as you're seated, we're going to ask our ushers to go ahead and make themselves available. But one thing I'm going to ask you to do is if you see a Connect card in the seat in front of you, would you grab one and fill it out? Uh, no matter if you're a member, a regular attender, or, or a first-time guest, just grab one, fill it out, drop it in the offering as it comes by this morning. And then, of course, one of the most important parts of that card is on the back side, and that's a place for you to put your prayer requests, your praise reports, uh, places where you want us to come in agreement with you in prayer. Uh, we have an intercessory prayer team that meets on Monday nights, and they pray over your cards. And then on Thursday mornings, we have staff meeting here in the conference room, and we pray over your cards. So we want to make sure that, uh, that God hears your needs. So if you have a prayer request, just put that on there and let us come into agreement with you. And then when God meets that need, make sure and put the praise report on the card. Amen? Because we want to pray with you, but we also want to jump up and down and shout with you when God has met that need. So we, we want to celebrate with you as well. So, so make sure and, and put that on there. I, I want to take a moment and just welcome any first-time guests, anybody that's new to First AG Inverness. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, we're so happy that you did. We're so happy that you found your way here this morning and are worshiping with us. Thank you for coming. And I also want to take a moment and just welcome our live stream family, and we have people that, that watch from, from all over and consider this their church. And, uh, we love you, and we're grateful for you as well. Thank you for being able to be with us today. So no matter whether you give in person using the envelopes and the seats or if you give online, however you give this morning, you're included in this prayer. So let's just offer them up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you this morning for being so, so good. Father, you bless us. I thank you for your presence that we feel in this place. Your presence, Father. Lord, your presence changes everything. Lord, I thank you for those uh, who are givers who are sitting here today that, that obey your word and give into your kingdom, Lord. And I just pray that you would bless their socks off, Lord. That you would bless them for being givers according to the principles of your word. And Lord, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
Waymaker, Waymaker, sing it with me. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I can't hear you, Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's sing it like we believe it this morning. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. with God sometimes we guard our hearts because we're hurt people have hurt us you can just open your heart to him this morning he wants to heal the hurt the deep hurt that you don't tell anybody else about this morning you are here touching every heart I worship you I worship you you are here you're healing every heart I worship you I worship you you are here I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's the way maker. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it. 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Give him some praise this morning, church. He's the way maker, miracle worker. Why don't you look at your neighbor this morning and say, way maker, miracle worker. Sing it out. I don't care if you can hold a note or not. Just way maker, look at miracle him. worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Just want you to worship this morning, church. Right. Amen. Right. Worship however is comfortable to you and pleasing to God. Amen. Sometimes you just gotta dance and shout it out. And sometimes it does it doesn't even matter if you dance well. I I don't dance well, but I sometimes I just gotta dance and get it out for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good this morning. Thank you so much, worship team. Didn't our worship team do an amazing job this morning? so grateful for them. Uh, before we get started this morning, can, it, can you just give me some liberty to do one thing? Uh, Brother Dale Miller, would you just stand for a moment if you're able this morning, sir? So Brother Dale Miller is a long-term member uh, of this church. He is one of the foundational stones of, of this church, and today is his 89th birthday. Amen. Would you give it up for him? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I know what some of y'all are thinking. I, w I hope I look that good at 89 years old. And I hope that I can dance like he just did at 89 years old. And some of y'all are like, I wish I looked that good at 50. <laughs> Amen. Looking good. Blessings on you, uh, Brother Miller, and so grateful for you. And uh, if you have had been in this church for, for any length of time or had been a long-term member of this church even before Jess and I came as your pastors, but even back to when Jessica and I attended here in Children's Church and Youth, um, that Brother Miller was known for doing the voice of Donald Duck. And uh, he would do that for the kids on a regular basis and still does. So if you run into Brother Miller out in the lobby and, uh, and you have your, your kids or even if you just have your inner child inside of you and you just want to hear Donald Duck, uh, ask him to do Donald Duck for you because he does an amazing job at it. Amen. 
grateful for you, Brother Miller. I, I want to uh, talk about just a few things that, that is going on in the church in the lobby out front before I, I get into the rest of our sermon series today. Uh, if you came in the front doors of the lobby, you would have seen it. If you came in the side entrances, you would have missed it. Uh, but there's a, there's a table right beside the map, and on that table, there's a couple of sign-ups. One sign-up is for you to join Growth Track, and Growth Track is a class that's coming up on March 8th and March 15th. I'll be teaching the first round of it. It will be in the fellowship hall. And you go through growth track just to learn uh, about our vision, you know, where we're headed as a church. But it also, uh, you have to go through growth track from this point forward to join the church. So if you're thinking about taking membership here at First AG and you want to do that, would you join me in growth track on, on March 8th and March 15th? It's from 930 in the morning until 1030, right when service starts, we'll let out and, and come in here and have service. Um, but it, it, there's a sign up in the lobby at that table. So if you plan on doing that, just, just put your name on there, sign up, let us know that you plan on attending. Uh, we'll provide you uh, with some continental breakfast. So uh, when I say continental, it's probably a little less than continental breakfast, but it'll be prepackaged uh, donuts and muffins and, and things like that, maybe some fresh fruit and some orange juice and coffee. But we'll provide you with something to eat and drink, and we just want you to, to know the vision of the church and see where we're headed. So it does, it does a few different things. Uh, you can join the church through Growth Track. Uh, you can connect in the church through Growth Track, and you can learn where you need to serve in the church through Growth Track. Amen? Because we believe... Uh, that saved people serve people. So we, we want to know that if we're saved, we should be serving somewhere in the kingdom. And there's plenty of places that are available now to serve here in the church, and there will be plenty of places coming up uh, available for you to serve in the church. And we just want you to take advantage of that. The second sign-up sheet that's on that table is for baptism. So the last Sunday in March, we will be holding a special service. So we'll have a normal service, but as a part of that service, we'll be having baptisms, and we'll be having Covenant Sunday to give uh, those who go through a growth track and opportunity to stand before the church and take membership in the church. Um, so those are that's just a couple of special things we'll be doing that Sunday. But if you uh, have gotten saved and you've never been baptized, let me encourage you to sign up for baptism because that is the next step in your faith. So if you've received Christ but you haven't gone through and been baptized, we want you to do that. So sign up in the lobby. Uh, if you have a child that's never been baptized and you feel like it's their time and they're ready, you can sign them up in the lobby. Uh, so just make sure and put your name down there, put your information down, and, and uh, we'll take care of the rest for you. Then lastly, on that table, we're going to be having our first annual Easter explosion uh, coming up. Uh, it'll be the weekend before Easter weekend, and we'll be, we'll be holding it here in our field, in the, in the grounds. And it's an open to the community event where we're going to stuff 4,000 eggs, and we're going to let kids uh, search for them and, and come in. We're going to have some photo opportunities, some food for the kids, and we're just going to love on our our community as well as the kids here in our church. Um, so there's a basket on that table for you to donate candy. Uh, so we've, we've got some stuff that we've already bought, but we'd love it if you would help us out with that. And in your shopping over the next couple of weeks, if you want to pick up some bags of individually wrapped candy, bring it to the next service and just drop it in the foyer in that basket, we would greatly appreciate that. How many of you know candy is good? I, I love candy. I love chocolate. Like, chocolate is good. Amen? That's why I can't shop at TJ Maxx. Anybody ever go to TJ Maxx? You stand in that line to check out, and they have every kind of Giraldi chocolate, like, all down the aisles, man. And, I, you know, I, I went in for a belt. I, I, I had a belt in line, and by the time I got through line, the belt didn't fit. I had to go back and return it. <laughs> And get a bigger belt, amen. So, so it's uh, it's it's it, chocolate is good, but but whatever you would like to pick up and give, we have some sample uh, types candy in the basket now that you can check out to see what is the best kind of candy to get for that event. We and we greatly appreciate that. Would you turn to Second Corinthians chapter six with me, please? So today we're finishing up our finale, and, and um, our finale of the series we've been in this entire month, which is This Is Us, and we've been talking about marriage, and we've been talking about family, we've been talking about relationships, we've, been, we've talked about singleness, we kicked off the whole series talking about being single and what that looks like in today's world. Uh, and then the next service was about married and what that looks like in today's world. And then last Sunday, Pastor Kenny Berger uh, just absolutely uh, preached the paint off the walls, uh, did, did a, a, a fantastic job preaching on family, did he not? Go ahead and give it up for him. 
And then this week, we are going to be moving into just relationships in general. So these, this, uh, this sermon today kind of entails all relationships, including uh, marriage relationships, dating relationships, engaged relationships, but it also includes friendships, business partnerships, all, all the types of relationships that we have in our life. So if you're at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, say amen. All right, we're going to start reading that our key verse for today is verse 14. So we're, it will be on the screens if you did not bring a Bible with you. If you prefer a, a paper Bible and you did not bring one, if you look around in the pews, there's, there's usually some Bibles there for you to use. Or if you have a digital device, uh, we have Wi-Fi. It's a First AG Guest, and you just log into that. There's no password, and you can go right to your U version and open up the Bible on your device. So however you want to follow along, uh, you can follow along any of those ways. But we're going to read verse 14 this morning, and it reads like this. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity uh, to deliver your word this morning and deliver this message to our church. Father, I just pray that you would bless it. As always, Lord, I cannot do anything apart from you. That, Lord, that nothing up here is effective without the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray today that, that you would move in this place, move in this building, but most of all, Father, move in our hearts. Help us to, to hear your word clearly and effectively. If there be anything in this message, Lord, that, that, uh, that uh, applies to us, Lord, let us hear your voice and let us uh, have repentive hearts or let us have open hearts to receive it. And help us, Lord, to walk it out in our daily life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So we normally quote this verse to teenagers. You know, that's, that's our normal use of this verse is quoting it to teenagers. Where you shouldn't be unequally yoked. You know, and we talk to our teenagers and they, they go into the public school system and, and uh, find boyfriends and girlfriends. And as, as Christian families, as Christian parents, we say things like, uh, do they love Jesus? And, and I've, I've said that a lot to all of my kids, you know, especially my girls. And uh, my son chose not to date uh, through high school, and, and I give him kudos for that. Uh, he has saved himself uh, for his wife, which is absolutely an, an incredible thing. And I just, uh, I, I love that about them. But they are getting married this coming Friday, uh, which is cool. So that's, that's awesome. But I remember particularly with my older daughter, um, I would say things all the time. Like every time she brought somebody new home, I would, I would find myself or, or, my, or my wife looking at them and saying, do they love Jesus? Do they have Jesus in their heart? You know, and, and as teenagers, you know, can, do you know that hormones get the better of you on, on occasion? So, so a lot of times they, they see a six-pack abs, and, and, and they don't see, you know, past that very much on, on occasion. They're like, pow, 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 and they, that looks good, and, and they kind of go brain dead for a little while, you know what I mean? So you have to kind of guide them in that and say, uh, you know, do they love Jesus? Uh, uh, do they go to church? Where do they go to church? Do their parents serve God? You know, we, we ask things like that that on a regular on a regular basis and this verse that we that we teach out of today or this verse that we just read we we use it a lot for kids it's probably most read in youth groups ain't that right pastor eddie uh in in youth groups it's it's probably most read but how many of you know that that verse is not just talking about teenagers dating that verse applies to you if you're 65 years old and you're out on the dating scene amen that if, uh, if, if you are a widow or, or widowed and, and you're out on the, on, on the prowl, rawr, amen, and, and, and you're looking uh, for, for a new spouse, you know, that verse applies to you. But listen, it just doesn't apply to romantic love either. That verse applies to you if you're getting into a covenant with a business partner. If you're coming into business with somebody and you're about to come into a covenant relationship with them and signing on the dotted line and starting a business together, then this verse applies to you. If you're coming into your friendships, if you're just meeting people and coming in and, and inviting people into your inner circle as friends, uh, this verse applies to you. Uh, 
But this verse totally applies to all of us as Christians that none of us should be unequally yoked with unbelievers because what does righteousness have to do with lawlessness and what was the darkness have to do with light? Uh, so when we come into certain aspects of our life, it's so important that we go back and we think about this verse. Uh, how many of you know that relationships define our life? Relationships absolutely define our life. God put us on this earth, on this planet, uh, for relationships. God put us on this planet to, to have relationships. Uh, matter of fact, half of the Ten Commandments is vertical, uh, talking about our relationship with God, and the other half of the Ten Commandments is horizontal, talking about our relationships with other people. But the entirety of the Ten Commandments has to do with relationships, one way or the other. So God uh, put us on this planet to have relationships, but how many of you know that we have to be careful about how we steward our relationships? We have to be careful about how we steward our business acquaintances. We have to be careful about how we steward our friendships. It's important to do that. Uh, have you ever heard the quote, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? Amen. Show me your friends and I will show you your future. That's another thing uh, we probably said to our kids more than once uh, growing up. Show me your friends. Show me the people you hang around the most and I'll show you where you're headed. I'll show you what you're about to look like. First Corinthians 15 33 says this. Do not be misled because bad company corrupts good character. Uh, we had a youth pastor here in this church when Jessica and I were growing up. And uh, he would say things uh, that sometimes rattled our cages. And there was one particular quote that my wife remembers the most out of him. He was Pastor Rick Welshans, and he was our, our youth pastor down there at the, at the youth building uh, when Jessica and I were teenagers. And he would say the phrase, if you wrestle with a pig, the pig will get you dirty before you get the pig clean. Right, And we, we heard things like that, and we think about things like that, but we kind of try to weigh it out. Like, like well, where does that fit in with that we're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel? Where does that fit in that we're supposed to go uh, out and minister to unbelievers? Where does that fit in that where Jesus, you know, uh, went out and spent time with sinners? Uh, where does that fit in to our life? And the truth is that we have to be careful because there's categories of people that we have in our lives. And you have to keep some people in certain categories and other people in other categories. There are, there are certain relationships that we're called to. In certain relationships, the scripture gives us permission to shun. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. Some relationships God calls you to, and some relationships God calls you from. And you've got to be able to discern and know the difference. You've got to know who God has called to put into the inner circles and the inner workings of your life and who God has not called to be in the inner circle in the inner workings of your life. And you've heard me say it probably more than once that when God decides to do something in your life, he usually does what? He sends a person. When God wants to do something new in your life, he usually sends a person. But also, when the devil wants to do something in your life, what does he do? He sends a person. So it's so important that we communicate and have relationship with the Holy Spirit and discern who God is bringing into our inner circle and who God is taking out of our inner circle. Amen. It's important that we do that. Uh, so we should react to people differently. Political correctness doesn't say that. Political correctness says we should react to all people exactly the same way all the time. And then sometimes our love for people will get in the way and we'll start leaning towards political correctness. Well, I've got to give this person the same amount of time that I give this person. And that's not true. God hasn't called you to give this person the same amount of time as this person. God has called you to give the, uh, the most amount of time to the people he wants you to have in the inner circle of your life. And the people who don't need to be in the inner circle of your life, you give less time to, and that's okay. And that's biblical, and it's all right. Uh, even if we dive into the, the temple in Jerusalem, uh, we see some discernment there. Uh, you have the outer courts, which was just for the Gentiles. You have the inner courts, which were for different types of the Jews. And then you have the Holy of Holies, and only certain people were allowed into the Holy of Holies. So if you take the idea and the sketch for that temple and you apply it to your lives, you've got to recognize that some people are outer court people in your life. 
Some people you can communicate with. You can show them the love of Christ. You can minister to them. Uh, but they're outer court people in your life. They're not called to be in your inner courts. And then you have some people that God has brought into your life that are designed and created and called by God to be in the inner courts of your life. These are the people that are your inner circle. These are the people that you confide in, that you repent to, that you, that you spend the most time with. That's the people who are called into your inner circle or the inner courts of your life. And then can I tell you this? There are only some people who are called to be in your holy of holies. Amen? And if you're, and, and listen, if we, we can break it down this way, there are only your spouse, if you're married, is called to enter into your holy of holies. Only your spouse can be that intimate with you that we aren't supposed to be that intimate and in relation with anybody unless, we, unless we're married, unless we put a ring on it. Amen? Amen? Okay, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm just checking on you. All right. So, so, so God has called some people to be your outer court, some people to be your inner court, and some people that you put a ring on it in your holy of holies. And no ring, no holy of holies. Everybody getting my drift? Okay, so, so we're moving in, we're moving past that, and we talk about uh, that some people, and especially Christians, because we want to do the right thing. And Christians want to be uh, who God has called us to be so badly, and we want to do the right thing that sometimes we leave discernment in the dust, and we go ahead and jump past discernment, and we give the same access to anybody that seems good to us. How many of you know people lie? People cheat. People steal. Right? You can't give the same access to all people all the time. And it's okay. If we look at the book of Exodus and we see Moses who took uh, the two million Israelites and the Exodus out of, out of Egypt and they ended up uh, in, the, in the desert place for 40 years and Moses tried to give the same amount of time to anybody that needed it. And what Scripture says is that Moses almost killed himself doing that. That Moses almost killed himself given the same amount of time to each and every person that needed it. Matter of fact, it said he would rule over disagreements and he would sit there from sun up until sundown. And he would be so exhausted they'd have to help carry him away uh, when he was done because it was killing him giving the same, anybody that needed it the same amount of time. I believe that God has called us to have certain people in our lives that we spend lots of time with and other people in your life that, that you don't. But it, it took, how many of you know, it took Moses' uh, father-in-law Jethro to sit down with him and explain to him that it was okay to place other people out there to meet those needs, that he didn't have to meet it all himself, right? And the same goes true for you. Some of you guys sitting in these seats today with good intentions, are killing yourself trying to meet the needs of absolutely everybody in your life. Can I tell you this morning that you make a very poor Christ? You are not the Messiah. And some of you in this room today need to say that right now to yourself, that you are not the Messiah. God didn't put you on earth to save each and every person that you run across. But God did put you on this earth to have a purpose to save a few. And God did put you on this earth to have a purpose to meet with some. And God did put you on this earth to have a purpose to change the lives of some people. But you have to have discernment of who those people are. you got to have discernment on what that is. Amen? So, so as I mentioned and we talk about relationships today, I know there's a few different thought processes that are running through your mind. Uh, number one, you may be thinking this. You're thinking of a relationship that should be intact in your life, but it's not. It's a relationship that you know should be good. It's a relationship that you know that God has called you to, but that relationship is not intact. And you need help today understanding and knowing how to move along the path to, to fix that relationship and bring it back into right standing with God. That it's a godly relationship that God has called you to, but it's not intact and you're sitting in here thinking about it today and thinking about the brokenness of it. And then maybe some of you are here today and you're, and you're thinking as we talk about relationships, you're thinking of a relationship that you are in that should not exist. You're in a relationship that God has not called you to. And a matter of fact, it's a relationship that's so wrong that it's caused separation between you and God. It's a relationship that God has not called you to and it should not exist in your life and yet it does. 
And so today I challenge the two different groups of people that if you have a relationship that needs to be fixed, that by the end of the day today that the Holy Spirit speaks to you and gives you direction. I always say, Lord, download it to me like a GPS. Lord, give me turn-by-turn directions on what I'm supposed to do to fix this situation in my life. Some of y'all are hurting because you have relationships that are broken that need to be mended. Some of you are hurting because you have relationships with children that are broken that need to be mended. And some of you are hurting because you have relationships with spouses that are broken and need to be mended. And some of you are hurting because you have relationships with parents that are broken and they need to be mended today. And I, and I challenge you to pray this prayer. Holy Spirit, give me turn-by-turn directions on how to correct and fix this relationship that you've blessed in my life that I have lost. Lord, move in that way. And then if you're thinking this morning about a relationship that you're in that should not exist, a relationship that's wrong, a relationship that's an affront to God, let me ask you to say this, uh, this prayer. Holy Spirit, download into me the directions and turn by turns of, of the G, like a GPS, Lord, of what I'm supposed to do to get myself out of this situation that I've gotten myself into. You don't know how many people I've talked to that have said, oh, God sent them into my life. Uh, if they are brought you into a life of sin, God did not send them into your life. If that relationship caused separation between you and God, God did not send them into your life. And people still say, oh, that was God all the way. No, it wasn't. That was you all the way, or it was the devil all the way, but God had nothing to do with it. And if it's causing you to sin, and it's causing brokenness between you and God, then it's not Him, and we have to recognize that that relationship has got to go. Amen? Some of y'all need to shake it. Some of y'all need to get like, like militant today about the relationships in your life that are wrong. Some of you got to get militant and decide if this relationship is wrong, I've got to move it out. I've got to make a decision. I've got to get rid of it. And I've got to move into right relationship and the relationships that God has sent into my life. Amen? Amen. So point number one today is this. Relationships should be prioritized. Relationships should and absolutely be prioritized in your life. There are certain people that you are called to first. There are certain people that you are, you are supposed to serve first. There are certain people that you're supposed to meet their needs first. There are certain people that you are called to first. Amen. That, that the relationships have to be prioritized in your life. Genesis 2 uh, verses 8 through 18 says this. In verse 8 it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from there it parted and became four river heads. The, the name of the first is Pashon. It's the one which skirts the whole island, the whole land of Havilah. Where there is gold and the gold that is in the land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidekel. It is the one which goes towards the east of Assyria. The fourth river is Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So we find in Genesis that God uh, puts an emphasis on relationships immediately. And although this particular relationship that God puts first emphasis on is a husband and wife. Because that was God's first relationship that he created between two individuals on the earth. Right, So that means uh, this morning that if you are married, that is your first earthly relationship priority. And if you are not making that relationship your first earthly priority, then you're out of order in the relationships in your life. Amen? Uh, Kennedy and Kyle, help me out for a second. So this is my daughter Kennedy and her husband Kyle, and I hate that he's so much taller than me. Um, <laughs> but he is, and he's so good looking, and that just kills me. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just totally teasing uh, Kennedy married Kyle last year they just celebrated their first anniversary 
right? Give it up for them. They've been married one year, and uh, as of February 2nd, they were, they were married one year. And, uh, and I think about, when I think about priorities in our life, now, I, I'm not ashamed to say that Kennedy was a daddy's girl, right? Kennedy was just a daddy's girl. Uh, me and Kennedy uh, clicked. Uh, we had the same stupid sense of humor. Uh, we like the same stupid memes. You know, we send each other the same stupid stuff all the time, and we just have that kind of sense of humor, and we like it, and we both find it really, really funny. And my wife is like, what is even funny about that? And I'm like, are you kidding? That's hilarious, you know? And, and I'm just dying. We, we, we have the same uh, personality, and, and, and she and I were tight. But the moment that they walked down the aisle and the moment that they put a ring on it, guess whose first priority Kennedy is? Her first priority is Kyle. And over the last year, these two have done an amazing job of making each other their first priorities. And I'm so proud of you guys, but I just wanted to use you for that, for that moment. So, so priorities in relationship is important. And when we come into marriage, Scripture says that a, that a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That means that there's a shifting in relationship at that moment. Uh, Jessica and I are, are struggle with the fact that there's going to be a shifting in relationship this coming Friday uh, when Colin leaves his father and mother and, and marry his bride. There's a shifting, and can I tell you, there's already been a shifting in his attention. He has not given his mom and dad any attention for like six months. <laughs> like, I barely get him to go out. I offer him steak. I will take you to Outback. And he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to, I'm going to hang out with Katie. I'm like, I know he's in love. He's skipping steaks, right? But, but the truth is that Jessica and I, because, especially because he's our baby, it's, it's a struggle. He's our youngest, and he's, and he's getting ready to leave and cleave. And anytime there's that moment, there's a shifting in relationships. And I wonder, sitting here in the, in the crowd today, is there anything uh, in your life that needs to shift in your relationships? If you are married and your spouse isn't the first person that you call uh, when you have some exciting news, then there needs to be a shift in your relationship. If you are married and your spouse isn't the first person that you want to run home to after a hard day at work, uh, then there needs to be a shifting in your relationship. And that starts with a shifting in your mentality, and, uh, which starts with always with prayer. Amen. And we're going to get to that a little bit today. Uh, but in the beginning, we see a man created by God, and then God enters into relationship with Adam. So before Adam ever entered into relationship with Eve, he entered into relationship with who? With God. That means for every one of us that are sitting in here today, unmarried or married, single or not, you celebrated Valentine's Day or you celebrated Single Awareness Day, whatever you did this past month, can I tell you that your first and utmost priority in relationship is you and God? You and God. And if you're right with God, your other relationships have a much better chance of getting right. But if you're not right with God, then the other relationships in your life have, have a much worse chance of being right. Amen. In order to have the best relationships that God has called us to, including friendships, including business partnerships, including dating, including engagements, including marriage, in order to have the best relationships that we can possibly have, then we first have to be in alignment with God. We first have to have our relationship with him right. So, so God creates uh, Eve to give Adam a suitable helper. And how do we know that God prioritizes marriage as the first relationship in our life that should be a priority? Uh, God didn't make Adam a brother. God didn't make Adam a mother. God didn't make Adam an earthly father. God didn't make Adam a child. He made him a wife. And he called the two together to be one. So if you are married today, your first priority in earthly relationship is your husband or your wife. That's your first priority. Everything else flows out of that. And if you're not married today, your first primary, uh, primary relationship is still God. And you come into alignment with God and then every other relationship in your life flows out of that. Amen. Point number two today is this. Relationships should be evaluated. You should regularly 
evaluate the relationships that are in your life, especially those who are in your, your inner circle. And they shouldn't be anywhere near your holy of holies unless you put a ring on it. So that I'm not talking about. But if they are in your inner circle, uh, they need to be evaluated on a regular basis. Are these people who are in my inner circle, are they the people that God wants in my inner circle? Are they the people that are, that are helping me to lead a life that's for Jesus? Or are they helping me to lead a life apart from Jesus? Who are these people in my life? So for, you have two different types of relationships that you could possibly have. Okay, we could boil every relationship down in your life to these two. Here's the first one, godly relationships. First one is godly relationships. What does that mean? A simple definition is this. God is at the center of the relationship. And, and I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friendships that are deep. Friendships that you spend a lot of time with. Is God at the center of that relationship? And if so, has God called you to spend all of that time with that person? Has God called you to spend all of your resources with that person? And you have to evaluate and take a look and see if God doesn't have other places for you to disperse your resources. So if it is a godly relationship, the answer is yes. The relationship is God approved. The relationship does not cause separation between you and God. Now, you can still have a godly relationship like a marriage that's struggling. You can still have a godly relationship that has conflict, that has issues. Why in the world could we have a godly relationship that still struggles and has issues? Because we're people. Amen. Anybody in the room not a person? Well, we have one. Because we're people. When when we're people, we, we struggle. We struggle with with relationships because that's what people do. We come into conflict with people that we love. That's why the Bible talks so much about forgiveness. That's why the Bible talks so much about going to your brother and making things right. The Bible talks about this because we're going to come into conflict. So just because you're in a relationship that has some conflict does not mean that it's not a godly relationship. Right? So the other type of relationship is this. It's a godless relationship. A simple definition of a godless relationship would be this. The relationship is your God. The relationship itself is everything that that you deal with. If you have anxiety every day over a relationship that's in your life and you wake up with just, ah, your stomach is just dying and you can't even go to God in prayer, but the first thing on your mind is trying to see that person or deal with that person or, 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 or try to fix an issue with that person and you're not even thinking about God, then it's not a godly relationship. It's not a relationship that God has endorsed. Anything that draws you away from God is not a godly relationship. One book says this, and this is specifically for people who may be dating of any age, whether you are uh, 18 or whether you're 89, this applies to your life, right? It, It says, one book said, people search for a relationship, find somebody willing, and this doesn't have to be a, a, a romantic relationship, but they find somebody willing to fill a role in their life. And so what we do is we go home and we type up a job description and we hand it to them and then we blow up the relationship when they don't fulfill all the roles that we laid out for them. That we go home and we we type, we're like, oh, this person might be my friend. This person might be the bestie I've been looking for. And we go home because in our brokenness, we, we think that they can fulfill us. So we go home and we type up this job description and it looks something like this. I'm looking for somebody to save me. I'm looking for somebody that I can spend time with that will save me, rescue me, deliver me, heal my emotions, cleanse my toxic soul, be uh, completely selfless in all situations, being truly altruistic to me, meeting my needs above all else, and provide me with everything that I need forever and ever. Amen and amen. And we type up this job description and we give it to mere humans, expecting them to meet those needs. And we say, here you go. This is, listen, I want to be your bestie. I want us to be BFFs on Facebook. And, and, and I want you to be my favorite on Instagram. And I want all of this stuff in our life. I want to go eat uh, Tuesday afternoon lunch with you. And, and, and we, we're going to do this stuff. And you come hang out at my house. I'm going to come hang out at your house. Uh, but listen, there's just one thing. I need you uh, to be Jesus Christ, my Savior. 
Uh, can you do that? And we hand them a list with a description of what we need. And we expect a mere human to meet all the needs in our life that the only person that's capable of meeting those needs is Jesus Christ. So then you say to me, well, Pastor Steve, I've been through 13 relationships in eight months. Pastor Steve, I've, I've changed my status on Facebook so many times that, uh, you know, that Facebook banned me. Right? And you say, well, listen, why is that? Why does that happen? It's because that person can't walk on water. If that person could walk on water, they would meet every need that you've got. But because that person is not God, they can't meet all the needs that only God can meet. So in order for us to be healthy in any relationship, whether it be romantic or friendship or business partnership, before we can be healthy in any covenant that we come into with people, uh, we, have to, we have to first be healthy ourselves. We have to first be in relationship with God. Amen? That if we're in relationship with God the Father first, and we allow Him access to our heart first, and He heals all the broken things within us, then guess what? We don't have to go to people looking for them to heal our brokenness. We don't have to go to people going, why can't my wife just heal my addictions? Why can't my wife just, just heal my broken heart from when I was four years old and somebody was inappropriate with me? Why can't my husband or why can't my best friend fix the fact that my first marriage was another disaster and, and they were abusive and, and evil? Why can't people do the things for me that I need them to do? And then we walk around constantly alone because, because those people couldn't fix our problems and we're not taking it to God. And we're saying, God, I need you to be God in my life. And then I need you to provide friends in my life that are friends. Amen? Because a friend in your life is not a savior. A spouse in your life is not a savior. Right? God is your savior. God is your redeemer. God is your deliverer. Amen? God is your way maker. God is your miracle worker. God meets those deeds. God is your light in the darkness. People are people. Amen? Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise today. So, so being evaluated is important. Point number three is this. Three types of people we enter into relationships with. We may all have been these types of people. We may all have currently these types of people in our life. But if you go to the book of Proverbs, you'll find uh, the book of Proverbs talks mostly about three different types of people. The book of Proverbs puts people into three different categories. The first category is this, wise people. So the first category that the book of Proverbs will put people in is wise people. So let's take a look at what a wise person is in your life. Because how many of you know, if you don't know what to look for, you don't know how to recognize it. How many of you want to be around wise people in your life? You want wise people to be a part of your inner circle, right? So let's take a look at what wise people are. First of all, they're humble. They're humble. If they look at you and tell you they know absolutely everything about everything, they're not wise, right? That's a foolish thing to say. Wise people, first and foremost, are humble people that are in your life. Secondly, they're teachable. Wise people are teachable. Thirdly, wise people embrace reality in your life. Now, what, what do you mean by that, Pastor Steve? What does embrace reality mean? That means that they adjust themselves to reality. They don't expect reality to adjust itself to them. That's what a wise person does. They recognize that the current path that I'm on is not working, and I need to adjust my path to try to get to a better path. The, the way that we're handling this relationship is not working, so we need to adjust the way we handle this relationship to get to a better place, right? So that's what wise people do is they embrace reality. How many of you know that uh, political correctness in the, the world that we live on here in the States does not embrace reality? Political correctness is so far from reality, it's not even funny. That means there's no wisdom in it. There's no wisdom in political correctness. So, so we have to embrace reality. Fourth, they have empathy. These are people in your life that when you're hurting, they feel your pain. They, they cry with you. They laugh with you. 
They give you a hug when you need it. These are people that are empathetic to your situation. They know what you need, and they try to, try to meet that need in the moment. They're, they have empathy. Number five, they're responsible. They take responsibility for the ways that they might be uh, causing issues in the relationship. And if they're always pointing at you, they're not wise. Wise people take responsibility for their own decisions in the relationship and try to fix what they can fix, which is them. Amen? If, if you're in a relationship, a friendship, a business partnership, whatever it is, and they're always pointing their finger at you, they're not wise. Right? They, they need to be looking at themselves. Number six, they seek to learn and grow. They're constantly trying to better the relationship. Constantly trying to fi- figure out what it is about the relationship that needs, needs to be better. And they, they move in those directions. And number seven, this is the most important thing of being in a relationship with somebody who is wise is they point you back to Jesus. They point you back to Jesus. They don't act like they know everything. And when they can't give you an answer, they point you to Jesus. Because that's what wise people do in your life. Proverbs 13.20 says this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Here's the second kind of person that Proverbs talks about. And uh, another verse that Proverbs hits on it is verse 1.7. And that's foolish people. Foolish people. Proverbs 1.7 says this, Fools despise wisdom and instruction. They despise it. So, so let's look at some characteristic traits of foolish people in our lives. Number one, they're prideful. They're never willing to admit when they're wrong. Foolish people in your life are prideful. Number two, foolish people are unteachable. They refuse any help that's offered to them in their life. They're unteachable. Number three, foolish people want reality to change for them, but they don't want to change for reality. Foolish people are unwilling to make life changes. Number four, foolish people in your life are selfish people. They're narcissistic people. They're people who who only care about themselves. And it's evident every time you have an issue and you try to try to reach out to them and they're suddenly unavailable. Or they're talking over you uh, when you're trying to share something that's deeply wrong in your life and you're hurting and they're talking over top of you and not willing to listen. These are foolish people in your life. And number five, they're irresponsible. They always see themselves as the victim. That means even when they're in the wrong, it's somehow somebody else's fault. They're the victim. They're irresponsible. The third type of person that that the book of Proverbs talks about is evil people. Now, the first two types of people that are in your life in relationship, you want as many wise people as you can. You're always going to have some foolish people in your life, right? That's why you're careful and you discern about who you let in to the areas of your life that are the most, the most secluded. So, so you want the most wise people in your life that you can get, but you're always going to have some foolish people in your life. But the permission, the, what the Bible gives you permission to shun out of your life are evil people. So let's take a look at what evil people look like in our lives. Number one, they're violent. They seek to hurt people, and they threaten those who want to sever ties with them. Generally, evil people are abusers. Evil people are, are not only narcissists, but they take it the step further, and they lay hands on people, and they abuse people. They hurt people. They hit people. This is, this is evil, evil, and, and, and it's personified in people's lives when they see this kind of things come out. Number two, they are always righteous victims. I can say or do whatever I want to say or do because of what happened to me. I have a right to act and and behave the way that I'm acting and behaving because of something that happened to me when I was a kid. Or I have a right to act and behave a certain way because of something that happened to me last week. Right? These these are people who are are, um, righteous victims. Number three is this. They're usually people who are deeply hurt. Now listen, hurt people hurt people, right? We know that. Hurt people hurt people. People who have gotten to the point of being evil, who have shut off their heart from God, people who are uh, just outright embraced evilness, people have said, I don't want any part of God anymore. I don't want anything to do 
do with God. I'm going to figure this out on my own. They're usually deeply hurt people because somebody did something to them in their life. And in that moment, they've never taken the opportunity to forgive. They've never taken the opportunity uh, to walk in wholeness and allow God to come in and, and heal the situation. But instead, they've grabbed a hold of bitterness and they've chosen the route of bitterness in their life. And maybe they weren't evil at first. Maybe they were just behaving foolishly. But over time, they've ignored the call of the Holy Spirit in their life to draw them out of that situation and bring healing and hope to their life. To draw them out of that situation and bring light into their darkness. And they've ignored the Holy Spirit so much that that bitterness has turned their heart completely black. That that bitterness has, has taken over them on the inside. So the only response they now have is to make sure other people hurt as bad as they hurt. And they find themselves in a, in a situation where they can't control it anymore. It's become who they are. Now, evil people are not a lost cause. But there's one man who can reach them, and you're not it. One man can reach evil people, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can turn a heart from stone into flesh. Jesus Christ can rescue and change someone who is so hurt and so broken that all they do is hurt other people. Jesus Christ can take an Apostle Paul who was hunting down Christians and killing them, who was stoning people and throwing them into prison and, and, and full of anger, anger and, and bitterness and hatred, and take a man like that and turn him into an apostle that's planting churches all around. God can do that. Jesus can do that. You can't do that. Amen? Listen, these people that are evil need help, but you're probably not it. And the type of help that sometimes it takes for somebody who is this far gone is this kind of help. They need a lawyer. They need a police officer to show up at the right moment. They need a counselor. They need a professional help. And most of the time, that is not you. So God doesn't call you into situations where you constantly get beat down and where you constantly get abused and where you constantly get hurt. God hasn't called you to give your time and energy to those relationships. If that's your spouse, then you need to put some separation and space there until they move from evil to at least foolish. Because how many of you know we can deal with a foolish spouse? We can work with, with a foolish spouse. But when a spouse is beating you and they're hurting you, uh, you need to put some separation and space there. Amen? Amen. I know, I know we got real deep all of a sudden, but you know this world needs that sometimes. You know, people need real talk in their life sometimes. People need to, need to hear real direction from the Bible on what it looks like in a real relationships that they're dealing with today. And that's what it is. So point number four today is this. Questions to ask. This is your first question today as we close to ask. Who am I in relationship with that is wise? Who am I in relationship with that is wise? Who brings wisdom into my life? Who, who helps me? And if you don't have anybody that you can say, man, I've got such and such, and, and I spend time with them, and they are wise, and they bring wisdom into my life, and they, bring me, they push me closer to God, and they point me to Jesus. Now, can I tell you that you need to start praying for that person in your life? You need to start praying for God to, to bring those people into your, into your life. So who am I in a relationship with that is wise? And then secondly, who am I in a relationship with that is foolish? Who doesn't need to, to get all of my attention because I have to be built up too? So who am I friends with that is foolish and they're eating up all of my time so that I constantly feel depleted and drained? Who do I need in my life that is wise to help build me up? And who do I need uh, to, to, to separate a little less time from that's draining me and causing conflict and, and pushing me uh, away from God? That's the, second, the third thing. The fourth thing, or the third thing is this. Who am I in relationship with in my life that is evil? And not everybody in this room will have somebody in your inner circle that, that is currently evil. Not everybody in this room will. 
But can I tell you, there's probably a few people in this room who have someone who is so eaten up with bitterness that they hurt you every chance they get. And you need to put some separation there for you. And you need to let Jesus deal with them. Amen? And if it's a marriage, um, shoot me an email, and I will, I will guide you and give you direction uh, in that part. If it's not a marriage, you go ahead and put space there. Amen? Because you're not in a ring. You don't have a ring on it. It's not covenant. It might just be a friendship. But you allow a friend to tear you down and be abusive to you. You need to put some space there. Amen? So this is the second uh, question. What areas of my own life am I wise, foolish, or evil? We started off this message today talking about we've all been uh, all three at certain times. We've all dealt with all three in our life, and we've been all three at, at certain times. There's been times in my life where I've been evil. And there's been many, many times in my life where I was foolish. But being in right relationship with God has made me more wise than I've ever been in my life. It's brought more wisdom uh, into my life than I've ever had. So four helpful habits when evaluating yourself and your relationships. Number one, prayer. Consistent prayer. Consistently pray about those people who are part of your life. Number two, privacy. Pray and keep your business off Facebook. Listen, Facebook is, is more full of evil and foolish people than it is wise people. There's way more evil and foolish people on Facebook. You don't need to be getting advice from them. You need to pray. You need to seek wise counsel and keep your business off Facebook. Number three is perseverance. Persevere. Pray about what you need and allow God the time to bring the right people into your life. And number four is pardon. You may have a godly relationship that is struggling. You may have a godly relationship that you've just been butting heads with, but they love Jesus, you love Jesus. You know that God brought them into your life. You know that, that God brought you into their life. And you need to fix a situation. So the last thing you need to do is pardon and forgive so that you don't start sliding down the scale of yourself from wise to foolish. Right? That we forgive and we make our relationships whole because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Amen? So if God hasn't given you permission to shun that relationship, then you forgive and you pardon and you move forward. Amen. Would you stand with me today? I want to pray with you before you leave today. I'm going to ask our, our prayer team just to make themselves available at the altar. And if you need prayer for anything, it doesn't have to be what we've talked about today. It doesn't have to be any particular situation in your life. But if you just need, you need prayer for a, um, you know, a doctor's report or you need prayer for something else altogether in your life or you need prayer for what we've been talking about, which is relationships. And I want you uh, to step out and come up here after we close and just get the prayer that you need uh, from our prayer team. But what I would specifically want to pray over everyone here today is that God places more wise people in our lives. That God sends people with wisdom into our lives that help uh, rise us to a new level in, in Christ. That God does something new in us by drawing new people to us, by being connected. And that God shows us the areas of our life where we need to be more careful with our relationships. So I'm going to pray that over you as we, as we leave. And then if you need prayer, please come, come to the front. If you don't, then God bless you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity just to read your word, to take a real hard look at, at relationships in our life. Father, I thank you for this whole series that we've dug through what the Bible says about every possible relationship in this series. Lord, I pray that you would guide us, that you would direct us in this season. I pray specifically, Lord, over those that are sitting in this room who couldn't think of a single person who brought wisdom to their life. 
a single person in their inner circle that was wise. I pray, Lord, that you would open the door and that you would send that special somebody into their life. That somebody who could pray with them, help guide them, give them godly counsel, and ultimately point them back to Jesus for every need. Lord, I pray that you would supply those needs in people's lives today. Father, it's not lost on me the importance of friendship in our lives. That we have a a desire and a need to be known. And we have a desire and a need for friends in our lives. But Father, I pray that you would bring the right ones. Let it be your will in our lives, not our will. Then, Father, those, those who are in our life who may uh, lean uh, foolish, Lord, I pray that you would give us turn-by-turn directions on how to deal with those people in our lives and what you want from us. Let us have discernment with how we deal with those situations. And then, Father, for the people uh, who may be in relationship in an evil situation, Lord, I pray that you would rescue them. I pray that you would get a hold of the heart of the person who is evil. Get a hold of the heart of the person who has turned from God. Get a hold of their heart and turn them around and turn them towards you, Lord. And I pray for that person who is constantly hurt, Father, that they would have the protection from your hand, the strength, and the courage to remove themselves from that situation. And, Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you today. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You're the Lord of lords, the King of kings. Jesus, your name is above every other name. Jesus, strengthen our relationships with you. Let our relationships with you be first and foremost in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. God bless you guys today. And if you need prayer, come down and come down here and get it. Don't leave without it. And then don't forget on your way out to stop by the table in the front if you want to sign up for any of the stuff we mentioned. God bless you guys.